Don't you dare say that I want it. Everything to fall apart when it's hard. Hey everyone, welcome back. Just a forewarning, this video is very heavy into theorycraft. It's also taken a lot of testing and comparing results with others to come to a conclusion on mechanics of what I'm showing you today. Maruna is a very interesting frame, namely, her kit is super bugged. Make no mistake, this is a bug, but at the same time, I have absolutely no idea when this will be patched. In fact, the bug itself seems to have a bug, introducing a completely new mechanic to the game. There's also going to be some fat math if you want to see the proofs of the strats, and this build concept ranges between 100 to 120 kpm. Alright, so Varuna's 4 was buffed in a recent hotfix to have 20% crit chance and a 1.5 times crit damage. Previously, it had 0% crit and a 1.0 crit damage multiplier. Every kill now increases crit chance by 5% and crit damage by 0.5 times, and your once crit damage buff now applies to her 4. Yada yada, it's still a single target ability and can't kill properly in an AoE capacity whatsoever. It's a good Demolister Acolyte killing tool now, and can kill x spying units too. But perhaps you've noticed that every so often, her 4 does kill in an AoE on Steel Path. And it seems to be something to do with her too. Is her 2 priming for her 4 to kill in an AoE? Is it the 2's damage itself? Or is it the 2 spreading your 4's damage? The correct answer is a little bit of all of them. But we want to focus on today is how her 2 does in fact sometimes spread the slash ticks of her 4. Make no mistake, because of how convoluted this interaction is, I am certain it's a bug. This is different from her 2 spreading normally, because it is only supposed to propagate status effects created by the ability itself. This is obvious with rudimentary testing where it ignores any new elements added by your weapon. It also only spreads the statuses applied to the enemy on the very first cast. Further casts will be ignored when the enemy dies and will only spread the original 5 procs. This is actually a correction to my original Varuna video where I claimed it only spreads the final cast on a tagged enemy, but yes, it is still impossible to spread more than 5 status effects from a single enemy. But like I said, you can under certain specific circumstances spread status effects created by her 4. In fact, it's not just her 4. Her 2 can spread status effects created by anything in the game. Other helmets subsumes, your weapons, even statuses inflicted by your teammates. The status spread is equal to the original source scaled by the number of stacks and divided. So with enough damage, you can even kill acolytes this way. What are the rules for this to happen? 1. The status you want to spread must also be inflicted by her 2. The order doesn't matter, so if you want to spread slash with your weapon, her 2 also has to inflict a slash. Simple. Two, the enemy must survive the direct hit and die to the dot for it to spread. If they die to any raw damage afterwards, no matter the source, the dot created by your weapon will not spread. Three, the dot that kills it must match a status inflicted by your two. So if your 2 inflicts electric, and your gun inflicts electric and slash, and the slash dot kills the enemy, your electric stacks will not be passed on. Likewise, if your 2 inflicts slash, and your gun inflicts electric and slash, and the electric dot kills the enemy before slash manages to tick once, your slash stacks will not be passed on. When the enemy dies to your non-ability dot that matches one inflicted by her 2, all the matching dots are passed on. This means if you kill an enemy with a gas dot, but your weapon and two inflicted gas, electric, and slash, then all three statuses of gas, electric, and slash will be passed on in the AoE. This is true regardless of if the gas, electric, or slash dot landed the kill tick. The biggest caveat, besides getting actually desirable elements out of Varunas 2, seems to be that the enemy must live the main hit for the status procs to spread. There is a way around this, which I'm coining the Slash Taxi. What is the Slash Taxi? It is when you use a non-slash status to pass on slash status in an AoE, even when you kill the enemy directly in a single shot. How does this work? It relies on weapons with two component hit mechanics. 
Anything that hits twice or more per shot works. The most obvious case of this are weapons that have a direct hit component, and then in a resulting AoE produced afterwards. All breakdowns from this point onwards assume that you casted your two, successfully inflicted a slash proc, and then shot the enemy and also inflicted a slash proc. Why do we want Slash so much over other elements? Because it has infinite scaling and does not require armor strip. It also means this strat comfortably scales into endurance without issue. The problem with Slash is that it does not tick at time zero. This means that enemies afflicted by her too must survive one second after damage is applied from your weapon or whatever for them to die to Slash and then propagate the status in an AoE. If anything else kills them in this time that isn't the dots you inflicted, then the spread fails. This is where the Slash Taxi comes in. If I shoot this Chacker, the AoE is calculated at the same frame as the direct hit. Both the direct hit and the AoE are capable of inflicting status. Now listen closely. While all of the damage occurs in one frame, there is a chronological order of damage application calculations. The direct hit damage is calculated first, then the game checks to see if the direct hit inflicted a status effect. If it did, it applies a status effect, then the AoE damage is calculated afterwards. This is important because while Slash does not tick at time zero, other status effects do. Gas and Electric do. Why Gas and Electric today? Because it is the only combination of secondary and primary elements that can coexist on a build where both of them inflict dots as their status effect. The result of shooting a Gas, Electric, Slash Shacker at an enemy can cause a main hit to inflict Gas or Electric. So what happens if the direct hit of the main shot kills the enemy outright? R2 fails to spread. But what happens if the direct hit of the main shot does not do enough damage to kill? then the status check rolls. Let's say we proc'd electric or gas. These elements do tick at time zero, meaning a white number appears, but then our AoE damage comes into the picture and nukes the enemy. Because all of this damage occurs at time zero in a single frame, assuming we also proc slashed, even though our AoE is what killed the enemy, it is still considered a kill created by a status tick. Furthermore, because of Rule 4, which passes on all matching status effects between your weapon and her too, our Slash will still get passed on in the AoE, even though it never actually ticked once. Because the enemy died to a direct hit, the AoE and tick of our Gas and Electric proc at time 0. That is the Slash Taxi, and is a completely unique mechanic to how Varunas 2 works, and how to improve the ability of your weapon to pass Slash procs on. Accidentally killing enemies with your weapon on a direct hit is only an issue at base steel path, which is where the slash taxi is relevant. An endurance where it is literally impossible to kill armored enemies on direct hit with traditional slash setups, a generic slash build on Shacker will be enough to ensure they always die to the dawn, spreading a several hundred thousand to millions AoE slash proc. The slash taxi was created as a means to make this mechanic work on Varunas 2 in base steel path, where most of the player base lies. For those interested in that success rate of proccing slash gas electric, slash gas, or slash electric with her two, it's about 22.14%. There are 13 status effects. Slash gas electric is represented by 10 choose 2 or 45 possible combinations. Slash gas excluding slash gas electric is represented by 11 choose 3 minus 10 choose 2, which is 165 minus 45 for 120 combinations. Slash Electric is just a mirror of Slash Gas, so another 120 combinations. Thus, the total number of Slash Taxi outcomes is 45 plus 120 plus 120 equals 285. Total outcomes possible in general by casting her 2 is 13 choose 5 for 1,287 different possible outcomes. Therefore, 285 divided by 1,287 is 22.14% odds to get a slash taxi capable roll from casting her 2. So you have to cast her 2 on average 4 to 5 times to get a slash taxi setup that allows you to spread slash even if you kill on shot, so long as they survive the main hit and then killed by the AoE instead. But what if you just want a slash proc in general from a single cast of her 2, say for endurance? That's equivalent to 38.46%. There were 13 status effects and you proc 5. Outcomes assuming you proc slash are thus 12 choose 4, which is 495. As I said, there are 1,287 combinations. 495 divided by 1,287 is 38.46%. 
so long as you don't kill them with a direct hit of your gun, 38.46% chance to proc slash off her too. Remember that a lone slash proc requires the enemy to survive that main hit and then die to the bleed. Is Chakra the only answer? No, because the main requirement is to not kill the enemy with direct damage. Any high slashing weapon can work but will result in lower damage. The reason why I chose the Chakra is because it has force proc impact on both the direct hit and the AoE which is favorable for proccing slash and hits extremely hard. Using a beam weapon limits how much damage you can build up for slash since the actual slash procs are small and you're using the 1 second window to apply as much small procs as possible before it starts ticking and kills. The damage loss may be enough to be non-viable on Steel Path unless you bring Roar to double dip better on bleeds. But bringing Roar makes Varuna vulnerable since she will not have a proper crowd control tool so I don't usually recommend this. Feel free to try it out. The main showcases I give today will include the Kuva Chakra and Tenet Spirax. The Spirax is basically a much lower power Chakra, which is less likely to accidentally kill on direct hit, but at the same time the damage spread is much lower and thus may take more ticks to kill enemies within the AoE. I will also show how the Chakra build changes depending on if you're using this for base steel path or endurance. Let's look at Varuna first. This is a build focused entirely around maximizing the nuking power of her 2 with your gun. You can also do this with a melee which benefits from her 1, however I find it is significantly more annoying to maintain a certain amount of combo counter. But if you want to do that, I will flash this 12x Karis build, run it with Runa's 3 passive for heavy efficiency. You will be using 12x heavy builds whenever you see an enemy tagged with slash by her 2. A 12x Rumblejack with the exact same build works, but Shocking Touch instead of Molten Impact for pure electric instead of pure gas also works. These elements are only there to slash taxi the force slash proc from the heavy attack of your daggers. Why these daggers? Because they have the best odds of proccing their respective electric or gas while saving mod slots due to innate elements. Alright, Varuna build for real this time. Strength is irrelevant on this build, it only affects the crit damage bonus of her 1, the damage of her 2, and the damage of her 4. I'm using guns to DPS, a true gun DPS Varuna build, so the crit damage buff of her 1 is irrelevant since it only applies to melees. The damage itself of her 2 is irrelevant because we're spreading the damage of our weapon dots, not the ability itself. I subsumed off her 4 for Thermal Sunder instead, which doubles as a setup tool, a crowd control tool, and a buffing tool. The damage of Sunder itself is irrelevant. The biggest problem with Varuna's 2 nuke setup is damage consistency. You need an appropriate amount of damage for the content you are running, so that you do enough damage to kill with a slash dot, but not so much that you constantly overkill with a direct hit and fail to trigger the slash spread. Thermal Sunder is very important to this that you will see later. 280 range lets her 2 spread out to 19.6 meters. This is your kill box as the spread has 0 fall off. While this may seem small, the run is very chill and you can take your time killing enemies while maintaining extremely high KPM. It is a semi camp build in the sense that you are fishing for slash procs from her 2. This also grants your cold sunder 33.6 meter radius freeze range, which makes it the ultimate crowd control tool. Double casting it instantly freezes enemies in place, allowing you to set up your 2 easily and safely while checking the status proc bar. Some efficiency is desired because you will have to cast your 2 more than once due to RNG on inflicting slash. Her 2 only picks 5 procs out of 13 possible elements, so it is truly a gamble. Your 3 is here, so that if you run out of energy, you can whack enemies a bit with your melee to get energy back through equilibrium and health orbs. That's also why we want positive duration to make it easier for our 3 to build stacks ups to the 60 second duration without having to worry about it running out. This build brings brief respite with 2 Augur mods, one being on your pistol for 230% energy to shield conversion. With 130 efficiency, this makes it so casting your 2 or thermal sunder costs 35 energy which restores 80 shields a pop. This is enough to restore all of your shields if you have a Decay Dragon key equipped on Varuna. Cunning Drift is the cap out of range of 280. When are we going to get more range mods or arcanes, DE? Multi efficiency exists for duration now, and we have Nero mods to push it even higher, too. Rolling Guard to get those iframes, but it's really only needed in Endurance. Otherwise, you can run Prime Flow to get a bigger energy bank for your 2, as well as Natural Talent for fast and casting speed on your 2 as you're fishing for slash procs. Arcane Acceleration is because we're using a Chakra today, but you can run whatever fire rate or attack speed arcane that matches your DPS tool. You have a completely free arcane slot here, maybe Arcane Aegis for more comfort if you want. This is a 46.8% electric progenitor chakra. The first build today is for base steel path. 
I modded for gas, electric, and internal bleeding for slash. Both are direct hit and AoE have force proc impact, meaning each component of the hit has a 70% chance of proccing slash. You could use a non-electric progenitor, it just gets a bit more difficult to get gas and electric on the build for the slash taxi. What's important is that electric and gas have a similar weight, I know we can't get it to highest weight, but whatever. Lower damage is fine, you might also notice I'm using the non-galvanized version of Split Chamber. This is to keep our damage lower and consistent to reduce the odds of killing on direct hit on base steel path. I run Galvanize Aptitude because we actually need a source of base damage to run with Frostbite. Aptitude only buffs the damage of direct hit, but this is what we want for Gigakid to bleed procs. Aptitude is a stronger damage multiplier than Galvanize Chamber on this build. Varuna's 2 will consistently proc at least 5 status effects, meaning we get plus 400% base damage, whereas Galvanized Chamber just increases us from 1.9 to 3.3 multi-shot. Yes, Frostbite is our arcane tonight, and uh, the reason is because it does not require kills so we can keep it on max stacks forever. Kills from Varuna's 2 spreading are considered ability kills and not weapon kills and thus do not give you stacks on Merciless, Deadhead, and Dexterity. Frostbite requires cold procs to stack, from any source, whether Chakra itself or other weapons or even our abilities, aka Cold Thermal Sunder. And this is how Cold Thermal Sunder acts like a damage buff, because Cold Sunder lets us easily set up our two. And check health bars for slash procs, it also works perfectly in maxing Frostbite for consistent crit damage in multi-shot buffs. More multi-shot also means more status procs since we aren't using galvanized chambers, so there are no diminishing returns here to give us more gas and electric procs for slash taxi. The result of this build is a weapon with extremely consistent damage irrespective of kills. We have super high status for consistent gas and electric procs bundled in with our soul based damage mod, sourcing our lacking crit and multi shot from our weapon arcane and do massive bleeds almost every shot due to internal bleeding working on both directed and AoE to pass on with Varunas too. This is also a one form of build, meaning it is dirt cheap to run. For Endurance Steel Path, you just run a classic viral internal bleeding chakra made with a toxin progenitor. This is because nothing dies to direct damage in Endurance, so you don't need to use the slash taxi method. This is where you will spread multi-million bleeds, easily going from 500k into the 2 million plus range within a 19.6 meter radius. I'm on a heat progenitor today, so this does look weird on the sidebar, but it would be making viral otherwise. Spearx is the other choice for a base steel path as you can use the standard gas Spearx setup I used in my updated Spearx video from a while back. It's important to note that Impact is no longer the best progenitor for Spearx. For an updated review on Spearx and why it's being slept on, check the video at the top right. While an electric progenitor would make this build do gas and electric due to the heat, cold, electric, and toxin hierarchy for innate elements, with hemorrhage for slash because the direct hits have force proc impact, the Spearx doesn't really have the risk of over kill on direct hits like Chakter, and thus you can safely just go gas hemorrhage. The gas is actually here as a proper DPS tool and not just slash taxi, because Spirix has multiplicative gun CO scaling on direct hits, meaning the gas procs from direct hits are fully capable of killing trash fodder, and also taxiing slash with runas too easily. So how does this work in practice? You double tap Cold Sunder in a crowded area. Now you go cast your two on enemies until you get one with a slash proc. If it's a heavy unit, you can shoot them in the head with Chakr. If it's a fodder unit, shoot it in the body instead to make sure they survive the direct hit. This is just to minimize odds of killing with the direct hit while still guaranteeing massive damage from bleeds. Your three should be active so you can just whack a couple enemies here and there with your melee for more energy as needed. Otherwise, your 1 can be used as a survivability tool for invisibly and de aggro, or buff your melee as needed when you're swinging. That's all there is to it. Enjoy that slash taxi. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I try my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering Lua's Prey updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.